Hi everyone, Sneemaster here with a brief review of the new Aegis Saber Peregrine. CIG recently released the Saber Peregrine variant. The ship is flyable and is focused on racing and speed. The ship is 26 meters long, 24 meters wide, and 5 meters high. It looks similar to the other Saber variants, with only slight variations to the hull to focus on engine power. The Peregrine is designed for a crew of one, with a cockpit that has excellent views around the pilot. There are four MFDs in the cockpit which are perfect for displaying the various info you need. There are no living quarters in the ship, just like the other Sabre variants. The Peregrine has two size 1 Stealth Class C shields, just like the other Sabre variants. Not super powerful, but they help you get to your target without being noticed. You can bump that up with a Class A or B Stealth shields if you want to get better performance or better strength. In the sales notes, the Peregrine is supposed to have special armor to protect it, but looking at the numbers, the health of the Peregrine hull is only half the strength of the base saber. Maybe CIG will add actual lightweight armor to the ship in the future to make up for this. The Peregrine has slightly smaller fuel tanks than regular saber, with two size 1 hydrogen fuel tanks, a size 1 quantum fuel tank and a size 1 stealth quantum drive. The quantity of fuel tanks may be the same as the base saber, but the actual fuel storage is less. The Peregrine makes up for this by having an SCM speed of 267 meters a second and a max speed of 1447 meters a second, much faster than the base saber of 206 meters a second and 1235 meters a second. The Peregrine also has much higher pitch, yaw, and roll speeds than the base saber. Unlike the base saber, the Peregrine does not have moving wings, but the smaller wings it does have allow it to fit in the same basic hangars. You can also notice some of the extra engine parts that make it so much faster sticking out of the ship on the spine of it. The Peregrine carries no cargo but does have pilot stowage of 1300k micro SCU, which is about 1.5 SCUs. Not bad for storing weapons and armor in. The ship also only has a size 1 scanner but two size 1 coolers to keep those engines cool. The Peregrine also has no weapons of any sort, no guns and no missiles. Defense is purely by speed and agility. The Peregrine runs for $170 war bond and $185 in store credit in time limited sales, a little more than the base saber. Concierge can get it with war bond and a new paint. You cannot buy the Peregrine in game yet or rent it. The Peregrine has a grey paint with a yellow green accent. You can also apply the paints from any of the other saber variants as well. There are other paints you can get such as the concierge only paints like the grey and copper ash cloud paint and the black and chrome starlight paint. There is also the red and gold auspicious red paint that you can only get from the red festival event. You can always buy the tan and grey landslide paint, the green and grey windbreak paint, the white and grey polar paint, the blue and grey stormbringer paint, the red and black firebreak paint, and the orange and black harvest paint. Also keep an eye out for the upcoming Pirate Week and Day of the Vara. There may be special paints available to buy during those events. So the Peregrine is really designed for any jobs that require speed but no weapons. That limits the ship for mostly racing or scouting missions. It's a very agile and fast ship, so of course racing is a natural mission for this ship. It's not as agile as smaller racing craft, but has some of the fastest engines around. Just watch yourself on the tight turns when flying at full speed. Smaller racing ships might be able to take tighter turns than the Peregrine, so a good pilot will instead reserve full speed only for the straightaways. For scouting, the high speed and stealthy engines are great for getting in and out safely, but the small scanner does limit the range you can detect targets, so you have to get close to the targets to scan them. The smaller fuel tanks than a base saber also limit the range that the Peregrine can travel to do your scouting, but you could replace the quantum drive with a longer range non-stealth version if you need. You could use the Saber Peregrine to detect ships before an attack or scout ground locations before dropships come in. It could also be used to detect minerals or salvage in hostile locations where you don't want people to detect you. You can also use it to sneakily land at a ground location without being detected and do missions on foot. You can't carry much loot back without cargo storage, but the gear stowage might be enough to carry something small. Also, it's just a fun ship to fly. The speed and maneuverability make it a great ship to just free fly. It also makes it the only way to get an equivalent ship to the Saber Raven without buying the Intel Optane SSD. Sort of a sneaky way for CIG to sell a similar ship, but the only difference is the Peregrine has no weapons, while the Raven at least had some guns. The lack of weapons on the Peregrine do limit any other tasks that the ship could do though. You can't use it for combat or bounty hunting. It doesn't do much in any defensive role either. The lack of hull health also makes the Peregrine very delicate to damage compared to other variants. So make full use of your speed and maneuverability to prevent getting hit in the first place. Also, the power plant on the Peregrine is not a stealth version, so you may want to change that out for a stealthier version to help reduce detection. 
Personally, I don't know if the ship is worth the cost, but if you really enjoyed racing or being the scout ahead of a fleet, or if you really felt like you were missing out buying the Saber Raven, then go for it. Aside from that, it's a very fast, very stealthy ship that also looks very nice. Alright, that's it for the brief review of the Aegis Saber Peregrine. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. You can use my referral code if you decide to jump into Star Citizen, and you'll get 5,000 extra in-game credits. Here's a big thank you to my current patrons. Please check out my Patreon membership to help me make more videos. All patrons and members will have their names listed at the end of my videos and get access to my Discord channel. Patrons and members also have first pick on the next item I will cover, so feel free to sign up and let me know what you'd like to see next. Okay, catch you all next time.